Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models and I have got a very special unboxing to do here. It may look like a very boring cardboard box from the other side of the world, or my other side of the world, from La France. Um, this is approximately, or not approximately, I think it's 25 Rio Doak or Reed Oak figures uh, from their 3D printed figures and in this little review, I don't know how long this is going to go for because I'm, I'm dying to rip this open, it's completely sealed. <laughs> I want to show you um, the stuff that I need for my models. If you're new to my channel and you don't realize how crazy I am about aircraft models, I love to do almost all of my aircraft models in flight. Now, if they're flying, they need about three things going for them. They need a stand, they need to have a spinning prop or some sort of jet exhaust, and they need to have a seated pilot or crew if, there's a, if it's a multi-crewed um, thing. Now unfortunately most new kits these days don't include pilots. They just include seat belts and you know they're not engineered to do wheels up showing off the aircraft in its element. And the ones that do, for example I just today got a got a um, an old Tamiya RAF Mustang, a 148 one, that I'm going to build with my armor and airfix Mustang. Check out I'll leave a link up here above. Uh, it's got it's got a seated pilot, yeah but it's a 1990s kit and you know Tamiya have sort of kept up with putting seated pilots in, but they're not the best quality. The most recent F-35 one looks pretty good. Their jet ones look okay, but we're just talking about okay. So what I've had to do is over time, get things like this, get aftermarket, all right? Um, this is the Aerobonus F-16 pilot. It's a resin, a resin set, okay? And yes, it's been getting better. When I first started in this hobby nearly nine years ago, it was really difficult to actually get um, seated pilots for the correct type, the correct era, um, the correct pose even. Sometimes they were just sitting there with their hands on their lap, which is just useless, or they're climbing out of the cockpit, which I couldn't care less. I can't, it doesn't excite me. Or a standing pilot, which you just scroll through um, pages and pages of standing pilot figures. I don't want a pilot standing next to the aircraft. I want him in it. I want him flying it. That's what I do. So, what I recently did, apart from buying a 3D printer, which will hopefully alleviate me having to do this again, <laughs> we'll get into that another time. What I did is I, uh, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for Rito, um, for Norbert there to, to produce more and more figures that align with what I want. And unfortunately, he doesn't do much uh, World War II stuff. So I had to go for other sources for World War II. And there's still, I reckon there's still a huge gap there for um, 148 scale particularly, 132 is pretty well catered for, 148 for my P38 Lightning I might show you later, CMK just brought out a new P51 seated pilot and he looks fantastic, in fact I will get him out later just to compare you, but I went through my stash of kits that I know that I want to build, I'm definitely you know not the ones that are just going to sit there for two years, five years, ten years, and I thought okay I need to get them and I spent an inordinate amount of money you don't want to see the total there, but it's it's a lot. Um, getting all these figures and to fit what I want. So let's, without further ado, because I want to wrap it on, let's open the bloody box and get going. I apologise in advance for any glare or any sort of uh, nonsense going on. I've cut this open because I've just hidden my ad my address. You guys don't need to know where I live. I live in paradise. I love it up here. Don't want to move. That's a lot of figures. <laughs> uh, let's let's take them all out. What do we got here? We got a uh, Ukrainian pilot. There you go. Why have I got a Ukrainian pilot? I've already done the Ukrainian US Navy pilot. Modern with the, the JH, JHMCS. We've got a Navy pilot. We've got an Army helicopter pilot. 48 scale. Oh, why have I got that? Another one. It keeps going. Oh, the list is down the bottom. So I'm just going to get these all out. And let's have a closer look. Prepare to be amazed. What I've got here going from left to right is a 132nd scale, um, what is he, is that US Navy modern fighting pilot with a joint HMCS helmet, so that's for F-35s and so forth, Super Hornets. We've got a 148 scale, I believe, yep, that's a Ukrainian pilot, so that's going to be for my SU-27 flanker, the Great War Hobby one, or the one I did a review, I'll leave a link up there. The next one to him is his 172 variant. So it's the same figure, but in 172, because I'm going to do a little what if scheme in 172. And right there next to my very dirty fingernail, yep, 
That's at 1 1 44th scale. I'll see if I can zoom in on him. So this is the great thing about 3D printing. If the camera can actually... Can you get their camera? Ooh, might be a bit too bright. I don't know. Can you see that? That is amazing detail. I've got two of these. I've got... Where are they? I had them all piled away in a pile somewhere. Oh, they're underneath, the, they're underneath this mat. What I've got is two 144 scale F14 Tomcat pilots. I intend to do a catapult display. Um, oop, there he goes. He's disappeared. He's rolled off the, the tree. Uh, so that's why I got those because there, are, there were some in the dragon kit that I've got for that. The dragon, it's dragon, trumpeter, and a few other pieces. There are some crew there, but I wanted some really high detail ones. But this is just amazing. Let's just go straight to man scale, straight to 132nd, and I'll see if I can get a pointy, sticky thingy in here. So those supports are for 3D printing. So these are, um, if you don't know about Rear Doke, what he does is he actually has a scanner and he scans real life pilots and civilians and um, other people in wearing the equipment that they have, okay? And actually scans it and then creates a 3D model and then prints them. Now, unfortunately he doesn't sell the files, otherwise I'd, I could, um, I'd be printing these from now to all eternity, but they're amazing quality. I'm trying to keep that close for you, but I mean, you know, there's multiple folds and all the equipment there that there's, you know, look, look at the boots. You see the texture on the boots there? They're just amazing. Uh, we've got an oxygen hose, the helmet, the supports are in really easy. I mean, yeah, look at, look at this hose. It's got individual wires wrapped around it. I'm just stoked about that. And that's 132. If we look at the 148, which is the majority of what I've got here. And I'll quickly go over what I've got and give you an idea of the plans I have. Hopefully that's capturing that. It's not too bright. Well, that's the 148 Ukrainian, so it's a slightly different... See, the seat belts are moulded in, so you don't need to worry about doing seat belts. Just glue them into the seat. Uh, yeah, that looks fantastic. Wow. I'm so, so happy I got these. So, shall we do a little run around of what I've got them for and and why I've got them, uh, because that's why I'm here. So I'm just going to put the little 144 scale guy away first. Let's start with the smaller scale, what I've got here, and gives you an idea of how these are packaged. You get little, nice little um, soft pack things like this. And regardless of the scale, it's it's got the same sort of things on it. So we've got the picture of the actual uh, figure, and then the obvious code there, 144 scale. So what I've got here, that's the pilot, okay? And that's the Rio with his board there. Um, yeah, hand on sticks, which is again, this is one of the problems I get with a lot of aftermarket stuff or even or all the kit stuff. They don't have the hands on the controls. So he's got hands on the control stick and the throttle. So that's going to be fantastic for my little 144 scale display. So let's look at the next one. Let's move up in scales. I've got a few, I've got actually got most of this is 170 second, believe it or not. Uh, but I've got a few things on spec, on speculation. So this little set is the modern French which I think is close enough with his NATO style gear. This is for a Saab Vigan. I've got a 172. I think it's close enough. Um, I do have another a, another figure from, uh, I think from an Airfix 172 kit that might fit as well. But I got that on spec because, you know, it's only four euro, five euro to buy that. You know, it's less than a, about a cup of coffee. That's how much coffee costs down here. But the other one is the 172nd scale Ukrainian Serbian Uzbek um, layout. I've got that for a what if 172 an a10 perhaps in digital camo hmm all right let's look at the other 172 and we're going to shift gears and go into non-pilot figures so look at what he does and can you get an understanding of what i'm going to be doing 172 okay so we've got these are all a combination of 1990s and modern u.s navy deck crew so we've got i won't use them all in the one diorama but it will overload it but i've got Got a chap here kneeling. I've got one with a whiteboard for the catapult. Got one just standing around supervising. And of course, the ubiquitous shooter, the catapult shooter, and another guy leaning over standing. Now, the reason I've got this, and I'll show you a review of this later, I'm using the Great Wall Hobby. Um, fantastic. I think they're the best in 172nd scale for F14s. And the Italeri um, catapult uh, deck set. And I want to make a, yeah, wheels down. Yeah, I do do wheels down. Uh, because it's one of the best things about the F-14. It looks fantastic when on the catapult. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do a little diorama with most of these, probably not all of them, uh, but I'll try to work out the best best bet. So I wanted to get quite a few of these to, just to see what I could do. 
Okay, so there's another shooter there as well. So I've got what I've got one for each side, depending on how I feel that the diorama is going to work. But of course, they need crew. So I've got two complete sets of crew here. Um, well, we've got the the thumbs up. So it's obviously for the catapult launch. We've got the chap on the on the stick. So that's the pilot, and then we've got. No, no, I've got uh, one's for a pilot, one's for, both of those are pilots, and then I've got different Rios here. Now, I actually have, because I've got two Great War Hobby F-14s, I did buy some uh, aero bonus ones for that, which I might pull out or I might not. Um, so, just to compare, you know, just, just, just to have a look. Actually, I will pull them out, but not just yet. <laughs> Let me just go through all these first, so I can compare these to other aftermarket. Now, are we done for 172? Yes, we are. So, the next one, which I showed you, was the 148 Ukrainian. Basically, just this is a great thing about 3D printing. It's just a scaled down version of the 172. But these three, which I hope sort of work together, I might have got the uniforms incorrect. I bought them together. If you remember about a year or so ago, I did a review, I'll put it up there, of the Hobby Boss MV22, the Osprey, the tilt rotor. Very hard to find pilots for that. And of course, Hobby Boss Trumpeter, they never put crew in any of their kits, which is where most of this other stuff's actually going to go. Uh, so, what I've got here is uh, it's the Black Hawk helicopter pilot ones, which I think is close enough with the gear and all that to the, the Navy, I'm not sure. And then I've got a crew, uh, an actual, a proper one, a US Navy crew standing. Uh, he said he's looking inside, but I reckon I can pose him standing at the door, the side door, looking out. Because I'm that one again, another wheels down, I'm going to do that wheels down uh, on the deck, ready to take off. All right, let's backtrack here a little bit. I've, I've gone back down to 172 scale, and what we have here is the, that's the Red Oak. 172 uh, Navy pilot, and this is the aero bonus. I'll get the right package. Okay, I'll just zoom in there. Whoop. So that's the uh, recently I just bought these 172. Um, both of them, you get both in the same set, plus you get the ejection seat. Okay, so you get the ejection seat for the F 14. So there's the comparison in sort of the details. Hopefully, I can, I'm showing that off okay. So obviously you don't get a seat with a Red Oak one, but I think the, the quality is quite comparable. Um, yeah, in fact, I think the Red Oak's just a little bit better, but it's really hard to see at 172 scale. But just for comparison, here are the 172 F-15, F-15, <laughs> P-51 pilots from PJ Productions. Now I find PJ have got a fairly good range, and yeah, they do do some good World War II stuff, but... Um, yeah, the detail is a, so only a little bit less than what you get with Red Oak and Aero Bonus and so forth. I'll try to get these in camera. Sorry, sorry for the wrong shots, but I mean, they're still, you know, a thousand times better than the globs of, of rubbish you get in modern kits. And, you know, even Airfix, their, their pilots still look, you know, pretty passe. But so they're the ones I'll be using in my Armour Hobby and Airfix. Um, 172 Mustang build. So yeah, let's compare the 148 stuff so you can actually see it because yeah, we're getting really small here. So there's the Reed Oak. I've just cut off most of his supports. That's a oxygen hose there. So that's the Rio sitting in the back seat with his hand on the on the dash. And that's the equivalent. Whoop, just kill him there. That's the equivalent aero bonus one with the full seat. I do like buying them with the seat because you can just um, paint the whole thing put a, um, put a, what do you call, one of these things, pin vise, Oop, there we go, well that's my super glue one, uh, up, up there and that's how you can paint it and then you just glue them straight in uh, and it's good for that because at least it's engineered usually, a lot of, you've got to realise a lot of kits are very inaccurate, they don't have the right cockpit floor um, height set right, I mean, you know, I really love, I laugh at reviews that go off about, oh, the accuracy of this is out and this is not quite right. But they never talk about the actual crew. They never talk about, you know, what's it like in the cockpit. The, you know, I think I read one fine scale model review that said, oh, it has a nice cockpit floor. Yeah, which is, <laughs> to get a pilot in there, you have to cut his, cut his ankles off. So that one's, um, that grey resin is not showing up too well, but it's, yeah, it's fantastic detail. So they I would say they're comparable. Overall, just trying to get my eyeballs on them. Um, much, much better, obviously, than what you're going to get in the kit. And I think this will just enhance your model. Just no way um, can you replace that with just normal plastic figures. Although, I must admit, there is one um, exception to the rule, and that's the new tool. I keep having arguments with people about this. Hasegawa still make aircraft kits. They still make new ones. 
And then U2 132.0 and their 170 second scale Kawanishi Emily. Those plastic figures that they have in there, because they, they do them all wheels up, apart from the Emily of course. They're beautiful, they're absolutely fantastic. So what else have I got in 148? Well, let's just, let's just zoom out. And yeah, so what I've done is I've got replacement for um, a couple of my F14s for Tamiya. And again, I'm gonna do a catapult, so it needs some crew. So I've just got two figures this time because I don't wanna make the diorama so huge. It's basically just gonna be as it's shooting. So there's the deck shooter, and then I've just got another one there. Maybe he's holding up a weight board or he's waving goodbye or something. So I think that's it for 148 scale. No, there is no, there is one more. There is one more. Okay. We've got here, and while we're while you're talking here, I'll get out the error bonus version so I that I showed at the at the start. So this is a S, modern F-16 pilot, and that's with the JHMCS. I can't remember what that stands for, but basically it allows them to use the um, is it the Sidewinder 9X? Okay, so that's that's for the um, the off bore shite off bore sight. <laughs> I mean, having too much borscht. Loving drink eating borscht at the moment. It's a good good meal, good hearty meal. Um, I'm rabbiting on, but here we go. So that's what it looks like, and let's compare him to the Aerobonus because they're pretty comparable. Okay, there we are. So I'll be using that in an F-22. I was going to the Academy F-22. I've built it before. I think there's a video on the channel here from many, many years ago, and I did an okay job. Did it in flight because it is engineered in flight, and it's got a little pilot in there, but he's nowhere near as good as this chap. Uh, yeah, I'm going to update the F-22. I'm going to do a bit of a what if. What if they um, put the F-35 sensors in there? You know, what if they make it just, if they update it to say a B version? Why not? And also try to make it nice and weathered. So let's just have a, a bit of a look. Yes, that's all the 148. And if you can bear with me for one more minute or five more minutes, I'll show you my last two. And that's, you've guessed it, F-14s again. But again, why are they wearing that modern helmet? The F-14 went out, was serviced out in what, 2000, 2007? This helmet came in a lot later. What's going on there? Well, again, I like to run the what if scenario and I'm gonna do, in the future, it might take me a while, I'm gonna do a, um, an F-14F. Yes, an F-14F. What if the F-14 was still in service and wasn't replaced by, or supplanted, wasn't replaced, it's, it's, it's not as good as in some in most areas, by the Super Hornet. Uh, so I needed some figures and I've got a Trumpeter 132 F-14D kit and this is where they're going. So there you go. Well, I'll leave it there. And I, you can obviously see that I'm very excited and I'm, um, I can highly recommend these figures. Uh, they took less than two weeks to get out here from France. Uh, he had the order, I mean, like I said, 25 figures. He, I think I put the order in on Monday and they were printed and done by Friday or Saturday and out the next Monday. So pretty quick turnaround. And I've heard the same elsewhere. Uh, the only uh, downside, I think, to his range is, like I said, they need more World War II seated pilots. Uh, but he's got such a great range across different eras, different uh, nationalities. You've got Russian, German. Uh, there's, you know, there's military figures as well, not just pilots. Uh, and there's civilian figures, which is great. Truck drivers, photographers, just, you know, girls visiting a museum. It's all that sort of stuff. I heartily recommend you go to his website, check it out. For those of you thinking, oh, why don't you just print this stuff yourself, Chris? Why can't you? Why do you need to spend money on it? Well, my skills definitely do not <laughs> um, go to sculpting. And yes, there are some printing printed files out there that are available um, for seated pilots. I mean, they they just expand, especially Star Wars stuff, actually, which is something I will look at doing because I want to be printing some larger Star Wars kits in the future. But when it comes to military aircraft, not really. Um, they're not just there yet, and it's not something I think I can do myself. Myself, I just don't think I've got the skill set to sculpt a 3D human. You know, maybe a wheel well I could do, maybe, or maybe a flight stand. That's going to be about the limit of my skill. So, um, so yeah, this is. I'm more than happy with this. I really. I mean, the cost. Yeah, they're between five and fifteen euro each, which is what eight dollars to thirty dollars each, Australian. I don't care. I want to have quality. I want the aircraft to look like a real aircraft and not to have 
you know, silly seatbelt sitting there or on the ground, you know. Although, like I said, most of this, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> I buy all these bloody um, pilots and crew and that, and half of these kits are going to be displayed on the ground. Well, at least it's going to be almost in the air. It's going to be on a catapult. And I think that's one of the, the best poses for an F-14 is when it's just about to, to take off. I believe the F-14 is the only aircraft that looks as good flying as it does on the ground. With the exception of landing, it looks like a, um, a dead turkey when it's about to land. Anyway... Thank you for getting through all the way to the end of this video and um, stay tuned because I will be using some of these pilots in the near future. So until then, it's time to say bye-bye. Uh,